Welcome back to this course in polymer chemistry. In last lecture, we started our discussion on polymer properties and their evolution. And in last lecture, we discussed uh, mainly mechanical properties, the stress and behavior in tensile testing. We also discussed uh, the other testing behavior like impact testing and flexural testing or bending testing. At the last part of the lecture, what we discussed was the, the relationship between the mechanical properties and chemical structure or polymer chain properties. And we found that uh, in general, flexible black backbone, if you have a flexible polymer chain backbone, obviously, if I want to um, write here. If, if, if you have a flexible polymer ch chain backbone, then it is easier for somebody to apply stress and deform. Now, with which basically gives lower modulus, lower strength. However, the same flexible behavior can be helpful in case of impact properties, where if you impact because of its flexibility, it can absorb that impact energy more effectively and gives you a higher impact strength or it, it does not give a brittle fracture on getting hammered by a uh, impact or a grammar by a load. So, so, flexible backbone gives lower modulus and strength and chain stiffness of the backbone and the bulky side groups increases modulus and strength, which is self explanatory. If we talk about backbone uh, stiffness, then we increase the uh, modulus and strength. Increasing stiffness also gives lower impact strength and elongation at break, because if you have a stiff backbone, you cannot elongate before it breaks. For the same, we also have seen that uh, the modulus or mechanical properties of a polymer very much dependent on the temperature of the experiment, which means finally, if we when you are using the polymer in a particular application, you must remember the temperature of the application and second, the strain rate. If you think about the application where the material will come up, come across uh, some load which will come at a higher strain rate, then the behavior will be different if you are talking about just simply dead load bearing capacity of a material. So, modulus and other strength or elongation and break, or which means we are talking about brittleness. all these mechanical property uh, properties depends on temperature of experiment and the strain rate or the strain rate stress rate if you compare semi crystalline material semi crystalline polymer at same temperature and same rate obviously we know that with increasing crystallinity with increasing crystallinity, the modulus and strength goes up, modulus and strength goes up. Whereas, with uh, in, if you cross link this material with cross linking, the, uh, the uh, or modulus goes up. Now, let us talk about uh, a great dilemma in case of um, polymers. Now, we know that or you can anticipate that the properties mainly me mechanical properties of a polymer materials should increase with uh, molecular weight. It does increase and then uh, become steady after very high uh, molecular weight. So, basically good properties are favored by high molecular weight of polymers. 
So, this is nothing nothing unusual. So, you should expect this uh, being uh, so that is the advantage of a polymer. So, high volume molecular weight it gives the high mechanical properties. Other properties uh, do not um, changes with molecular weight that much though it also increases with molecular weight, but it does not keeps on increasing even if slightly with molecular weight it the other polymer will steady it uh, at a high molecular weight. Whereas, we have seen that you after making the synthesizing the polymer you have to go through the processing step to make the final part. So, you must make some some polymer some molecular weight which should be able to pass through the processing step. So, that you can get the final uh, final product and processability actually becomes easier as you can understand the if you do lower the molecular weight lower the viscosity. So, processability becomes easier if you have the low molecular weight. So, processing good processing is always favored by low molecular weight. So, ease of processing will means it the higher the molecular weight it will be difficult uh, for process. So, ease of processing will be lower with increasing molecular weight. Now, just to spend a minute why the ease of processing is so much dependent on molecular weight. Just talk about the rheology and entanglement of um, polymer molecules. The elastic properties of linear thermoplastic polymers are due to chain entanglement. We, we described in uh, in in last lecture that the elastic that the the resistance to deformation is due to the chain entanglement because the presence because of chain entanglement the chains are presents other maybe intramolecularly or other other chain the intramolecular chain segments are present in the vicinity of uh, a particular polymer chain which basically resist the deformation. So, if you have some polymer molecular weight which is uh, polymers which are having molar molecular weight uh, such a small number or such a small value that it does not entanglement entangle efficiently then you you do not get the desired property of a polymer material which will be useful for the applications of the polymers we usually use. Entanglements will occur for polymer chains above a critical molecular weight and we call that molecular weight as entanglement molecular weight M E. Now, if you look at the experimental value of a viscosity versus molecular weight of a polymer, viscosity till the entanglement molecular weight viscosity increases steadily with a slope of 1, but above entanglement molecular weight the polymer chains and entanglement. If the polymer chains are entangled then moving past each other going past to each other is become more and more difficult very difficult because they are entangled. So, the viscosity becomes much higher after the entanglement. So, before entanglement the viscosity scales to the with, uh, with, with the power of 1 with molecular weight whereas, the slope changes to about 3.4 after the entanglement molecular weight. So, if you increase the molecular weight further above this entanglement molecular weight the viscosity goes up drastically and the processing the ease of processing become difficult and difficult more difficult. See always you want a polymer somewhere above the entanglement molecular weight and uh, uh, just above the molecular weight. So, that it can be processed easily. So, this is a dilemma which molecular you should make if you make high very high molecular weight your properties will be higher similarly at the same time you lose the processability it is very difficult to process. It. So, you have to have some compromise you have to make molecular weight somewhere intermediate. So, you get the best of both and in case of thermosets you do not need uh, that compromise because thermosets are generally uh, starts with 
low molecular weight uh, polymers and you make the uh, the final product or uh, uh, you process that uh, low molecular weight and then subsequently you cross link that to increase cross link uh, or cure in other term and increase the molecular weight. So, you do not have to uh, compromise anything whereas, in thermoplastics you have to compromise between these two you have to choose a molecular weight somewhere uh, in between. So, that uh, your uh, mechanical properties is uh, just uh, uh, above a critical value of your requirement and your processability also is, uh, uh, is handleable means you can do processing. So, high enough molecular weight to get adequate properties and low enough molecular weight so that it, it can be processed. So, you have to compromise between these two. We talk about continuing our discussion on mechanical properties and we, we um, come to a concept of viscoelasticity. We have seen in our discussion when we were doing this uh, strain strain uh, curve, we have seen that the curve strain strain curve depends upon the temperature as well as the strain rate. Now, if you think about a pure elastic material, if we stretch a crystalline solid what happens? The energy is stored in the material and if we in the chemical bonds and then if you release that uh, stress it will come back to the original state. We talking about this is ideal elastic behavior. Similarly, if you have a liquid then if we apply shear stress say if I have a liquid a glass of water and then pour it then it will basically uh, flow it but that but if I if I remove the stress it does not come back to the original state. So, in case of a liquid or a fluid if I apply a shear stress to a fluid energy is dissipated in flow it basically flows and energy is dissipated energy is not stored. So, in case of elastic material energy is stored, in case of a fluid energy is not is not stored and, and it dissipated in the flow. So, it is a ideal viscous behavior. Now, polymers are somewhere in between they have depending upon the temperature and time of straining it they vary from elastic to completely elastic to completely viscous behavior and most often in the conditions they are viscoelastic. So, they have properties of both uh, ideal uh, ideal uh, solid and, and a viscous uh, liquid or viscous fluid. So, polymers have both ideal elastic and viscous behavior depending on the time and the temperature. So, we call polymers are viscoelastic. At low temperature and high strain rate polymer demonstrate elastic behavior as we have seen earlier in our strain stress discussion that a low temperature polymer becomes brittle it does not uh, elongate much. So, polymer behave elastic behavior similarly at a high strain rate also at low temp and high temperature and low strain rate polymer demonstrate viscous behavior and an intermediate temperature uh, the rate of and rate of strain polymer uh, be demonstrate viscoelastic behavior. Now, you can see in this uh, viscoelasticity behavior if you have a silly putty the toy uh, a material silly putty in home, but I do not have that material with him. So, I have what I have I have um, the a dough made of uh, wheat flour in I just uh, made this dough from wheat flour I just uh, put some water to make it soft. Now, basically what happened this is not a ideal viscoelastic uh, material to demonstrate, but I can show it so that you can understand uh, what do I mean by viscosity. This is a dough made up of uh, wheat flour and when I stretch this slowly what happened? it just elongates 
is so basically it flows. So, it keep on increasing if I apply this stress or strain in a slower rate. So, it keeps on stretching. Okay. Now, if I apply this strain rate, high strain rate from both sides, much faster strain rate, what happened? Let us see what happened. Again, I am saying this is not a example of a perfect viscoelastic material, but this is what I have in hand at this moment to demonstrate. So, I am trying with the whatever available at home. Now, I have this and then I do it very fast. What happened? It just breaks. So, what happened? Again, I am saying this is not the perfect material to show. If you apply the strain at a much faster rate, it breaks. It shows elasticity, is elastic behavior like a solid, but when you apply this strain very slowly, then it, it flows, the chains actually move past each other, it shows flows behavior and it shows viscous behavior. So, if I consider the strain stress curve, how does it look like for a viscous and elastic material? First of all, I uh, when you do tension testing, we one thing we must uh, remember that as we do this test, the dimension of uh, the specimen changes. So actually, the the strain and the stress or the strain actually changes because the original dimension changes. So these are the terms sometimes used: engineering stress is uh, F force by original original A and true stress is uh, is changing is actually basically the force by uh, the area at given time. Why similarly engineering strain is given by d l by this original length, whereas true strain would be the l at a given time. So, that is the true strain. This true stress and this true strain is difficult to measure. So, generally we actually consider engineering stress and engineering strain all the time. Now, let us see how the stress strain behavior of a viscoelastic material. Now, let us I see I apply this is stress or load. Now, I apply some time T 0 and keep at a constant level for some time and then release again make it 0 at some some t t. Now, what we will do a elastic material will do elastic material how the stress by strain curve will look like. it will change and then go back and then how the strain will apply the time when we apply the stress there will be a definite strain this this strain and stress are related by hooke's law we'll come back to that now at the time when this stress is released it will come back to the original state 
and this stress and strain is related by Hooke's law they are linear and is related by elastic modulus in between as a proportionality constant. Now, what happened to a perfect? So, this is a perfect elastic material, what happened to a perfect viscous material? How the strain will changes with time? Same stress is applied, same load is applied here. So, with time how the strain will change for a viscous material. So, the time T 0 it will start straining till load is present or stress is present it will continue deform and the time the stress is removed it will remain deformed permanently. Okay. So, it does not come back to the original state or any, there is not any recovery at all. So, this is a perfect viscous material and here stress is linked to the rate of change of strain with time and the proportionality constant is the viscosity. What happened to a polymeric material, a viscoelastic material? How does it happen? How does it respond with time? It basically, let me show here. strain. So, at the time you apply the strain, it will strain to some extent and then keep on continue deforming till the load is present. And when the load is removed as T is equal to T, it will recover some some part and then stay somewhere. So, it does not come back to the original source. So, this is a basically example of viscoelasticity. So, if for a polymer with temperature you can see all this behavior let us talk about a amorphous material. The glassy state A to B is a perfect elastic material. So, if you apply stress strain, apply a stress, it will strain and as long as the stress is there, strain will be there. If you remove the stress, the strain will become 0. So, that is the example of perfectly glassy material or elastic material. So, this part glassy part will behave like a perfect elastic. What about the leathery part B to C? When you apply the stress, apply the load, it deform fast and then as long as the stress is present, it will continually deforming and the moment the st stress is removed, it will come back, the elastic component is recovered here and then slowly recover some of the strain, but it will not come back to the 0 strain value, it, there will be a permanent deformation here. So, this is example showing viscoelasticity. So, the fact that it is not coming back to the original state, it is showing some loss of energy some viscous behavior and part of it 
is actually getting recovered which is the behavior of a elastic solid. So, that is the reason it is a example of viscous viscoelastic behavior. Similarly, in case of rubber a similar behavior and in case of above very high temperature it is like a polymer melt it, it does not recover at all and it continually gets deformed as long as stress is present. So, you get a complete viscous behavior. So, with temperature a polymer material can show different types of viscoelastic behavior from a perfect elastic to a perfect viscous behavior with intermediate behavior of viscoelasticity. Similar thing can be shown in case of that strain rate with higher strain rate it will be behave more elastic and this very slow strain rate it will be close to a perfect viscous and intermediate strain rate it will be a so viscoelasticity. Now, let us move to the other properties of uh, polymeric uh, materials what we discuss uh, we, we just completed discussion on mechanical properties. Now, we will uh, talk uh, the other properties and again we will not go into very detailed uh, description of these pro properties and how it is evaluated. We will just uh, give brief introduction brief uh, description of those tests. Let us first talk about thermal properties. Uh, we discussed about uh, the glass transition and the glass transition and the melting behavior of polymer earlier. Thermal properties are basically the response of polymeric material when the temperature increase or heat is supplied to the polymeric material. Now, besides the glass tension temperature and melting point the other other behavior polymer material can show is the heat distortion temperature or the softening temperature and very high temperature above T m when uh, uh, if you keep raising the temp if k if you keep raising the temperature it the polymer might decompose and gives uh, decomposition temperature. So, in a general in case of semi crystalline uh, thermoplastic material you have uh, first you have heat uh, distortion temperature the softening temperature then you have glass transition temperature then you have melting point or melting temperature and then the degradation temperature or decomposition temperature. For thermosets you do not have T, T G you have um, thermosets you have H D T and T G and then finally, and the decomposition temperature. We talked about uh, the glass transition temperature and melting point earlier. So, we want to discuss about the other uh, thermal behavior with uh, outer polymer behavior with temperature. This is from a practical point of view. This is the temperature where it starts uh, softening the polymer actually starts softening under some load. So, the heat deflection temperature is the temperature at which the material flows shows significant amount of deformation under a constant load. Now, this significant amount fixed amount is basically uh, is prefixed. So, if you compare you want to compare between uh, materials you can compare with the amount of uh, deformation uh, same amount of deformation between the materials. So, basically what is the test is done that one polymer samples is specimen is taken and one load load is applied a definite load constant load and then temperature is slowly increased at a given rate 
and at some temperature this uh, this uh, deformation happen and that particular temperature is known as heat and deflection temperature and like other heat dip temperature will depend upon how fast you are heating up this material how fast you are changing the temperature and obviously the amount of load is present the higher is the load the lower will be the temperature heat distribution temperature now how, why it is important let me give you example now these are all amorphous material polystyrene polyethylene methacrylate and polycarbonate bpa polycarbonate and the tgs are uh, approximate tgs are listed here 100 145 so looking at this material if you say that uh, if you make some specimen or some product out of the material this materials will survive till around 100 degree centigrade but that conclusion will be uh, erratic if we see this example these are uh, cd disc made uh, from polycarbonate and these are made from polymethyl methacrylate now these were subject to a heating conditions for 30 96 hours at 180 degree centigrade and 95 degree relative humidity same thing here but much lower the picture is after much lower duration at 80 degree centigrade now 80 degree centigrade is actually below the tg well below the tg of the pmma sample so you should expect that the polymer should survive but when you make a part it has its own load it has some weight so it has own load and when you stack it, this disc basically the lower one will also have load from top so at 80 degree itself it is deforming which means it should not be used a, a disc cannot be used, made up of pma will not survive a temperature of 80 degree centigrade so this is what uh, signifies so if you want to make a disc and find the which will be used uh, for a application at higher temperature you must uh, know the hdt uh, of that particular material and hdt is typically uh, as a general rule of thumb is about uh, tg minus 20 degree centigrade so tg is not sufficient Uh, for practical point of view you must know the uh, softening temperature now if you increase the temperature of polymer polymers typically degrade uh, this is very important in processing point of view because uh, while processing the polymers are uh, subject to to a very high temperature and as we have seen that tg plus uh, sometimes 150 degree centigrade or tm plus uh, 50 degree centigrade or even more and under shear in case of processing we are applying this uh, melts are mixed with the screws and so does in case of molding which means that uh, is under good shear so polymer might degrade uh, and decompose with those conditions so to find out uh, what is the inherent uh, thermal degradation behavior the thermogabimetric analysis is done which is in short called tga now tga is basically plot of weight loss versus temperature is just uh, nothing but uh, plot of weight or mass to be precise versus temperature again Uh, the heating can be done at uh, in air or in uh, inert atmosphere like say nitrogen gas or or argon gas obviously in air the decomposition rate and decomposition will be at much lower temperature compared to a Uh, situation where the heating is a temperature is increased under nitrogen or argon so weight is uh, plotted against temperature now with uh, 
we can get this uh, information um, from this test. Uh, basically, we can uh, know at what temperature this uh, polymer starts decomposing or degrading and uh, we can basically find out the temperature at which uh, 50 percent weight loss or complete weight loss whatever is your interest. Sometime small molecules comes out of the polymer during heating like HCl from polyphenol chloride H2O uh, from amic acids. Uh, so, if you we can from the weight loss we can get some idea about whether this type of reaction is happening. We can also do isothermal TGA where weight loss is monitored with time at constant temperature. So, basically that will give us uh, some idea if we uh, keep that polymer material at that particular temperature for long time especially in elevated temperature where there is some degradation or decomposition happening or not. And at higher temperature polymer sometimes depolymerizes, depolymerize and um, which might lead to some uh, volatile monomers. So, which we can get some idea about TGA. If fragmentation happen during heating or as uh, we have seen that sometimes additives are used used during polymer formulation. So, if they are on heating if there is some loss thermal loss of those additives that can be also found out. This is typical uh, thermogrammetric uh, curve of uh, different polymers PVC, PMA, LDP, PTF and PI in nitrogen and uh, these temperatures are corresponding onset temperature and the 50 percent temperature the temperature for example, for PMA this is the temperature correspondence to 50 percent weight loss. Now, the amount of mass is remaining after complete burning is what uh, is the char what is the char means formation after heating and uh, that is very important when you talk about the flammability and flame resistant behavior of the polymer. So, in this case basically it is showing that there is no char formation has taken place the basically entire polymer is decomposed off and has gone out. If in this case for PVC the there is a significant amount of materials remaining even after complete burning. So, there is some char formation has happened in case of PVC. Obviously, it also depends on how fast you are heating. So, the slower the heating you will see the decomposition temperature at lower temperature whereas, higher heating will take it to higher temperature. Basically, polymer cannot follow uh, the heating. If you are doing the heating in much faster rate, the polymer cannot follow uh, the heating profile. So, the effective temperature actually um, um, becomes lower if you increase the heating rate. So, if you want to compare between different uh, polymers the thermo, thermal stability at higher temperature you must compare at same heating rate. Now, the, there are other other, other uh, like thermal behavior uh, thermal test basically is done is uh, like Weichert softening temperature point. It is the temperature at which uh, a flattened needle of 1 millimeter square cross section under a specific constant load is applied and uh, the temperature at which it penetrates the plastic specimen to a depth of 1 millimeter it is uh, known as Bicard softening temperature. Another important uh, 
parameter or thermal behavior is the maximum use or continuous use temperature or it is sometimes called relative thermal index. It is the temperature the highest constant temperature at which the material will survive related to a application requirement. What does it mean? It means that you can use how, how long and what is the service temperature if you have make um, like a, that example I showed in a CD what is the surface service temperature that like means what is the maximum temperature it can survive for long duration um, at a, at, um, at a um, for that public um, particular application. So, if you want your CD material to survive for 10 years then you must specify what is the temperature you can find out what is the maximum temperature it can be use, use. So, you know like uh, in um, hot countries the temperature may go up to 45 50 degree centigrade. So, if you want to survive then your material the maximum temperature at least should be 45 degree or 50 degree. If we talking about a plastics which are used in say car bonnet, then you know that on getting constant heat from outside the bonnet temperature may go up to 80 degree 90 degree centigrade. So, if you want to design one material or test some material which will survive the duration of cars lifetime say about 20 years or 15 years then you should test that in advance. So, this is done in, uh, in, in laboratory in a accelerated way where basically the specimens are heated in, in a elevated temperature with some relative humidity and with time the retention, retention of properties are monitored and then compared with an existing material which is already in application and all for long time. So, if you compare with a material which is existing in that particular applications for long time and if you compare your material test material which is as good as that particular material or even better that particular material in the accelerated lab test then you know that your material will survive that particular temperature at, at least as good as the material which is in the market. Okay, Let us uh, go to the next property which is uh, flammability or uh, flame and flame resistance uh, properties of a polymer. Now, again this will be just uh, briefed we will have, we'll have a brief, big, brief discussion on these properties and subsequent properties. Basically, when you basically put a fire on a polymeric material it basically depolymerizes polymerase to monomer and uh, it degrades to uh, combustible gas and and with in the presence of heat it basically uh, form flame and it burns. So, that is the, the origin of flammability of polymer material. So, if you want to decrease the flammability you basically have to uh, remove this combustible gas from the system and uh, you basically has to reduce the when the heat formation heat generation on burning these polymeric materials. How the testing is then and in the lab the testing which is done is uh, called limiting oxygen index it is uh, most versatile small scale test. Uh, it is defined as the minimum concentration of oxygen expressed as percentage by volume or volume percentage in, in sort in a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen that will sufficient 
enough to support flaming combustion of a material. Now, how many, how, how long the flaming will happen that has to be fixed for comparing between materials typically it is 3 minute uh, burning or flaming. So, what is the experiment is done oxygen and nitrogen are mixed and basically it starts with pure nitrogen and oxygen is increased slowly to find out that the minimum oxygen required in terms of volume percentage in this mixture to sustain this flame for a specified time say for 3 minutes. So, limiting oxygen index is basically the volume of oxygen required by the total volume into 100 that gives the percentage of material. Now, the, the other tests are also there uh, which are done in, uh, in, in real applications where basically uh, which is uh, which is uh, been guided by UL um, laboratories and the rate the rate materials uh, in terms of different they gives different ratings like V0, V1, V2, HB and those things. In this case, they keep the specified specified geometry of sample, like uh, and the uh, this step these states are very difficult to carry out repeatedly, and only trained and certified person actually do test for this uh, uh, comparing material or give the rating. What happened? You basically take the sample and uh, uh, apply the flame from a particular distance and some cottons are placed, these are cotton placed in the container below. So, if it burns, if it burns and the while burning the sparks comes and ignite the cotton which which basically gives lower rating. So, a sample which burn from less time and which also does not the does not ignite the a inflammable material like cotton present in the bottom of the uh, container they actually gives the base ranking. It basically try to mimic the applicable uh, actual application when the polymers are uh, actually used in application you what do you want you want the polymers in case of a emergency what do you want you do not want the polymer to burn with a flame and even if it is burned then it should not actually gives or ignite the other material, other inflammatory material in the it should not drip to the floor or some other inflammable or combustible material. So, that it the the, um, the fire spreads. Also important is that it should not generate toxic smoke that is also important. So, in case of fire fire resistance material flame property it should not burn, even it burns it should not drip and ignite other inflammatory material and third it should not generate toxic smokes. So, these are the three criteria of a very good uh, flame resistant polymer. So, objective of flame retardation which to suppress uh, suppression of smoke and uh, toxic gas. It is actually it is a known fact that when something burns it is uh, it the, the, the casualty or fatality of the uh, people is uh, mostly because of uh, the toxic gases at first few minutes. So, if you suppress the toxic ga gas generation for first few minutes then in case of emergency people can go out of the 
uh, situation and survive. Whereas, if the toxic gate generates immediately after burning, then what happens? They cannot, uh, uh, they actually get uh, ill immediately and they cannot run away and uh, find a safer place. So, strategies to flame resistance is uh, to retard the uh, combustion process in vapor phase and uh, char formation ch causing char. If you have a polymer uh, which forms a high level of char, typically halogen containing polymers and also inorganic polymers and sometimes some added uh, additives uh, which does not uh, ceramic additives for example, which does not uh, burn and uh, and just go out of the system. They actually contribute to char formation and which actually suppress the uh, we basically prevent supply of this uh, combustible gas to this uh, um, pyrolysis zone and thus by decreasing the met the flammability. Okay, we will just uh, go to the next uh, set of properties where is basically the exposure what happened to polymer getting exposed in in environmental situation. For example, polymers uh, come across uh, uh, different chemicals. If you are talking about a medical devices, doctors or medical persons always apply some rectified spirit or ethanol to disinfect. So, your material has to survive. So, that has to be chemical resistant of the chemical the medical preparations are uh, using. It has to be uh, any outdoor materials plastic material they come every day come across UV light, heat, outdoor heat, rain and the, the bacteria and viruses uh, present in the material. So, that is in, in oxygen of the uh, environment. So, basically that combined we call that weatherability basically when some polymer material or plastic material is applied we find uh, weatherability. Weatherability is basically combination of all these effects like rain, air, heat, uh, light. So, combine all these uh, we, we call. Uh, so, if a material or plastic material survives longer in, in, in that outdoor condition, it is a better mat weatherable material. So, we test weatherability in the lab uh, in a accelerated uh, chamber which basically mimic uh, the outdoor condition uh, with uh, control parameters and we subject the experimental specimen in that condition and after in a frequent interval we basically test their mechanical other and other properties like optical properties to find out whether it is sustaining in that particular weather condition or not. In case of chemical resistant we basically apply uh, say we actually uh, apply uh, immerse the test sample in that particular chemical agent for a particular temperature and for a particular specified time and after that we take out uh, that material and we measure the mechanical property change whether it survived or not. We see we visually inspect uh, the material whether any swelling has happened or any surface is eroded or some cracking or crazing has happened and we also see whether the molecular weight of the material has changed uh, by the applying in coming in contact with the chemical agent. Uh, which can be done by measuring the viscosity of material. So, what we do we will stop here uh, for this lecture and uh, we will uh, 
talk about other properties like optical property and barrier property and uh, surface property of polymers in, in next lecture and we will also talk briefly that uh, most often polymers are not um, used as such they are basically used uh, with other additives which basically protect some of the uh, these polymers from this external agents we talk about or it basically enhances the property which uh, which can be used from outside so we stop today and uh, start with the rest of the properties in the uh, next lecture